I know it's only March, it might be a little bit early to say this, but The Queens of Animation is easily the best book that I have read this year so far and it may just carry on holding that title throughout because this is fabulous. This was written, written by Natalia Holt, initially released in 2019, the paperback in 2020, and the strapline for this is the untold story of the women who transformed the world of Disney and made cinematic history. I am a big Disney fan, by which I mean, you know, painfully obsessed. Um, my love of Disney is kind of my core passion within the film industry, and I'm also a feminist. So to have a basically a thorough overview of the history of Disney, but focusing on the roles of women, this is right up my street. And I will say it is basically a complete overview of Disney, and primarily animation. It touches upon some of their non-animated things. Um, but we are looking at Disney animation and it does take us all the way back to um, Laughograms. It slightly touches upon Laughograms. Um, and then when Walt Disney actually set up the studio, the first women who began to be hired and then how a couple of them managed to make it up the ranks to animator and so forth. And then the roles and influences that they brought forward over the years. I don't want to spoil too much by telling you anything that was too about this. That's kind of some of the more interesting points. But I will say that the treatment of women is not as bad as I'd expected. But certainly you can see why a woman at Disney, or presumably at any company at the time, certainly in the early days, um, 20s, 30s, would have felt out of place why they may not have felt confident enough to come forward with their own ideas. But this book focuses on the women who broke that mould, who knew their worth, who knew they were talented, and who were, quite frankly, bold enough and brave enough to stand up for themselves and demand that they were treated with the respect that they deserved. What's great about this is not just that it covers the history of Disney. You know, we're talking the shorts um i love how you know i'm a big fan of the disney shorts from the 20s till about the 60s it discusses things like elmer the elephant and the silly symphony shorts which i love then it takes us through snow white and then cinderella the problems with um song of the south and then towards the end it kind of does a brief overview of some of the more contemporary films um you know the incredibles and, and frozen uh, etc it also looks quite surprisingly at a little bit of detail um, into Lin Linda Wolverton and how she really influenced the development of Beauty and the Beast. So I won't spoil any of that um, in kind of what her role was, but it's pretty interesting to think that even then with Beauty and the Beast, much more contemporaneous than the bulk of this novel, this, this book, even then it could have been a completely different story if it was heavily influenced by the male art the male animators so there are there's a small cohort of women on whom this focuses some are more prominent than others um and i will be honest i had heard of none of them none of these names meant anything to me when i first opened this book and i glanced at the name uh, the names at the front didn't mean anything nothing at all um but of course, having now read it, I feel like I understand these women so much more. I can really appreciate the role that they played. And to think that if some of these individuals had never, if they had never taken that leap or taken that risk to push Disney forward with a female, well, not female-centric workforce, um, but I think there was a time when it was kind of almost balanced, um, but if they had never done that, who knows what direction Disney could have taken? Who knows which films might have been successful? Because the book explains fantastically how certain female employers uh, employees influenced things like Sleeping Beauty. Decisions that were made that may have been vastly different otherwise. And I think that that is pretty incredible. So I'm going to tell you the names of the women because I think that's the most important thing. Putting their names down on paper here, I think, helps to immortalise them. And, you know, Natalia Holt does this absolutely beautifully. If ever you wanted a guide to the key women at Disney over the years, this is it. 
So we have Grace Huntington, Bianca Modgley, um, Retta Scott, Sylvia Holland, and my personal favourite, Mary Blair. Mary Blair worked very closely with Walt, uh, Mr. Disney himself, um, right up until his death. And you can see they had a very close working relationship. And what I didn't know, and what I'm pleased I know now, is that she created, or she designed, the It's a Small World ride. That many people, millions of people every year ride this It's a Small World ride, completely oblivious to the name behind it, completely oblivious to the name behind the dolls, um, or the, <laughs> the mechanical figurines, I guess is the better way of describing it. And I think that that's pretty incredible. Not once did I ever think, I wonder who designed this ride. But now there's a name to it and it makes it so much more emotional and that's something i really love about this book yes it's well written it's well structured it's well laid out the information is fantastic but for me what i loved most about it was the sentimental emotional connection this is so informative not just from a historical perspective but from giving me a greater understanding of how a lot of disney characters and films that i've grown up with came to be and also giving me names and faces of the people who heavily contributed to that. Um, and for me, as I said, Mary Blair absolutely is the most prominent name in this. She's got quite a heartbreaking story, um, which I won't explain in any detail to you. But don't get me wrong, it also touches on some of the men as well who play, who paid, you know... Um, who paid a lot of um, compliments to these women and then kind of encouraged them to work harder. But also you can kind of see how a lot of the men were not necessarily happy that women were joining the team. Of course, when the war happened, more women were available. And then after the war, things became even tougher in a way because the men returned, job demand changed. And it's just so fascinating to think about how these specific women potentially shaped the face of Disney as we know it today. It's absolutely remarkable. And I'm sure there are many men, men, I was trying to say men and male figures at the same time. I'm sure there are many men who, who remain nameless or who are very infrequently mentioned by name, who also played a huge role in shaping Disney. Um, this touches on a couple of men who are in ethnic minority groups and the role they played. But for the most part, it's a beautifully written account of the history of Disney Animation Studios and of Walt Disney's own personal journey, but through the lens of the female perspective. And it is an absolute joy to read. One of the best books I've ever read about Disney, without question, the best book I've read so far this year. I got a little emotional when I finished reading it. If you're a fan of Disney, you have to read this. I promise you will love it.